Welcome to the Augusta Golf Show podcast. Now, here's John Patrick. Ward Clayton is the author of Men on the Bag, the Caddies of Augusta National. Now, that book, that book led to a documentary back in 2019 called Loopers, the Caddies Long Walk. Ward has now updated his 20-year-old book, calling it The Legendary Caddies of Augusta National. It's always a pleasure to welcome Ward Clayton back to the Augusta Golf Show. How are you, Ward? I'm good, John. How are things in beautiful Augusta, Georgia? It's just wonderful. We're looking forward again to the first full week in April. Um, what, what, what is it about this topic? Why were you fascinated? Why are you fascinated with this topic? Um. When I worked at the Chronicle as a sports editor from 91 till 2000, as you may recall at that time, we used to do uh, special sections over special sections, and we were always looking at the historical element of the tournament. And we always ran into the, the caddies, but if they were even mentioned, it was generally just by their nickname. So we had no indication of what their their full name was or the impact they made on the tournament. And I just they made such a significant contribution. I wanted to find out more about a, who they were and a little more detail about on their influence. People may not remember. There may be some people listening to this program who may not remember that until I guess what early eighties, um, the club caddies. Yeah, 19, 19, 1983 is the first year they opened the caddy ranks. Yeah. The, um, the club caddies caddied for all of the golfers, in the Masters, and in and in many occasions, famously, um, Arnold's oh, Arnold's yeah. caddy, Jack's caddy, yeah. It was uh, generally if you came and had some success, you would have the same caddy year over year. That wasn't always the case, but you know, Jack Nichols had Willie Peterson. Willie was on Jack's bag five of his six Masters wins. Um, Arnold Palmer had Iron Man Avery, who was uh, on all of his wins in 58, 60, 62, and 64. So you had some of these guys who came into the public conscious for watching the tournament, and they would see these caddies, particularly Willie, because Willie was so demonstrative on the golf course, you know, doing a towel over his head, smoking a cigarette. He was just, he was all about being a boisterous person. You know, Jack was pretty understated on the golf course. So they, they became somewhat famous in that regard. Willie is the famous caddy that in 75, as Jack makes the putt on 16, he's pointing at the hole, and he's jumping up and down just like Jack. Exactly. I think uh, Dan Jenkins called them uh, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. <laughs> they were dancing dancing around the green. So, um, you know, you asked me originally why this intrigued me. Uh, all, all caddies have an influence on tournaments, but nowhere like Augusta did they become famous year after year because if the other – major championships they went from site to site and generally would just get a local caddy from that course or a local person from that town to caddy for them and it wasn't somebody you saw the next year so every year you'd come back here's jack and willie peterson you know here's uh jariah beard with fuzzy zeller you know things of that nature you 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 sort of expected to see the caddy in that jumpsuit working for that particular player you mentioned uh, the players in the masters having particular caddies in in those older days at the club did club members also have particular caddies oh no doubt um carl jackson is the perfect example of that of course carl became famous for caddying for ben crenshaw and his two wins but carl also was the caddy for jack stevens the late uh one of the chairman of Augusta National, who he worked for as a caddy, but also worked in his uh, financial business in Arkansas. So Carl, probably that was probably Carl's biggest connection was w- hooking up with Jack Stevens, who eventually got Ben and Carl together. I don't want you to, I don't want you to give away a lot of the book. Well, why did you, why did you come back? Why did you update this book? What, what, what was needed? Um, a lot of the people I wrote about 20 years ago, unfortunately, are no longer with us. Um, particularly comes to mind is Jariah Beard, Jerry Beard, Darren Augusta, who died before the Masters last year. Um, he was sort of the historian for these guys. He knew where, 
you know, if I asked about some particular caddy and situation, oh, yeah, he lives so-and-so or something of that nature. So he could connect you. And I think you lost a lot of that. A lot of these guys are no longer with us. A lot of them are in their 70s going into their 80s. And they were so influential in the tournament. This story needs to be told and remembered, I think. And I think it even calls to the fact, and this is a majority of what I did with not only updating but adding to there's a particular neighborhood which you're probably familiar with in Augusta called Sand Hills, mm-hmm. and if you if you look at a map, uh, Sand Hills is surrounded by Walton Way and those large homes on the hill, um, these historic cemeteries, Augusta Country Club, and Augusta National. So a lot of the kids growing up in the Sand Hills neighborhood, in order to find a wage, much like any kid growing up in America. They, you know, wanted to go somewhere. They didn't have to get in a car. They could just walk. So they went to Augusta Country Club, learned how to caddy, made a little bit of money. If they got better, then they would sort of graduate across Race Creek to Augusta National. So I, I, I just figured that it was a, a story that needed to be told more in depth, particularly about that neighborhood, some of the um, situations they had to encounter just to get to caddy, you know, some of the racial strife in the South and the 40s and the 50s, 60s and the 70s, you know, they had to get through that in order just to go work. Backstagecountry.com, your online home for all things country music. Country music has so many generous artists who always seem to jump in to help those in need. We're spotlighting five who lead by example and lend a helping hand to charitable causes. See who made our list when you text GIVE to 45911. Text GIVE to 45911 and read all about it right now on BackstageCountry.com. We're talking with Ward Clayton here on the Augusta Golf Show. Um, How much did these guys make? Probably not a lot. Uh Um, um, They they made... um, well, it, it sort of depends, John. You know, for example, Carl Jackson with Ben Crenshaw, their relationship's so good. I would gather that when uh, Carl won for with Ben in 1995, that he probably made upwards of a, over a hundred thousand mm. dollars. That wouldn't be surprising. But you know, at other times, they didn't make a lot of money. But then again, they probably became famous individuals and allowed them to have situations like Iron Man Avery, every time Arnold won, he would take his winnings and go across uh, the Savannah River into South Carolina and buy, buy a brand new car. <laughs> um, so um, they became famous in their own communities, and it probably led them to have opportunities to do some other things. Again, I, I don't want you to give away the whole book, but, but a couple of stories. You mentioned nicknames. You mentioned you know, you've talked about Iron Man. Uh, a couple of the caddies talk, uh, give me a story about a couple of caddies with great nicknames. Um, president Eisenhower had a caddy named Willie Pertit. His original name was dead man. And Eisenhower changed it to cemetery. And the name came about because he was, he played drums at a bar in Augusta. And he, this young lady took a liking to him and, uh, a few weeks later, he decided he didn't want to have any relationship with her. And she got upset and brought some of her friends down to where he was playing the drums. And when he got done that late that night, they uh, jumped him behind the bar and took knives to him. And they thought he was dead. So they rushed him to the hospital. They operated on him. And they thought he would pass. And they sent him to the mortuary. But evidently, he had too much uh, of something in his system. So it, um, they didn't realize he was not dead. So they went to the mortuary and he was laying in the morgue and he scared the mortician after death when he came to, when he woke up and therefore he got the name dead man. And of course, cemetery later. So um, he lived, he, he I obviously lived his name. Um, uh, let's see. Another one would be um, burnt biscuits, which is Tommy Bennett. Tommy's still around. Tommy was Tiger's first caddy in 1995 when Tiger um, made his debut as an amateur. Um, Tommy got the nickname Burnt Biscuits because his grandmother was famous for on the wood burning stove in the house for making fresh biscuits, and she wouldn't let anybody have it until they were done. And Tommy, being a young man who was hungry, decided he was going to go through the kitchen window 
and get some of these biscuits. And there was a pot of boiling water on the stove, and he tipped it over and knocked it on him and burned himself, and therefore he got the nickname Burnt Biscuits. <laughs> and this, so, this just touches the iceberg of, of the stories that are, that are in this book, the legendary caddies of Augusta National. Before I let you go, Ward, best way, someone listening this morning, best way for someone to get this book is how? Go to Blair Publisher, B-L-A-I-R, B as in boy, L-A-I-R, Publisher, and you can pre-order the book. It'll be out here in a couple of weeks as of uh, here in late February when we're speaking. But uh, that's the best way to order, and it'll be in bookstores as as we, we start getting closer to the Masters. Uh, Ward, I look forward to seeing you in a few weeks. Thank, congratulations on this, and thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, John. Have a good day.